PeachyDragon.com. Happy creative stuff. Hi, and welcome to another exciting episode of Happy Creative Stuff. So I don't have the Blossom model rendered out yet, but here's a little taste of something that we can do. What we're going to look at now is how to do Bubbles hair in 3D. I already did, the, I already did Blossom and Buttercup still coming up. So what I have here is a model that's it's still half of the Blossom model. Like you can see the eyes are still the wrong color. I just changed the dress color and the hair is still wrong. But we're going to work on that now. That is what I ended up with. So this is a duplicate I made with no um, textures applied. And you can see that I changed the reference material. Exactly like the other video we did about setting up your reference material. I just changed it to bubbles in this case. Okay, let me go back to this. So to start off, we're going to try and create the same hair cap that we had here. Except I would like the bottom to be closer to our head. If you hear a bell in the background, that's our lovely always loving cat making a noise so I'm gonna take this head here and what I want to do is I want it to be a high poly model so at the moment you see that's what happens so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to duplicate it I'm turning on neurons for an editable polygon I might have to explain that not everyone would know but it's that's not important so I'm going to hold shift and resize it and then let go of shift so what will happen then is that'll make a copy that's slightly larger than the original okay now what i want to do is firstly let's position it a little bit forward like i said i sort of wanted to oh that's the background i sort of wanted to blend with the back of the model here so i'm going to position it to touch the back there now we need to cut this up similarly to how we did last time so let's apply our modeling material to that that we also discussed previously. Got the material set up there. I'm going to select this and I'm going to say apply to selection. Okay, and then also in this case, I need to be able to see through the head. So let me apply to that as well. Move this slightly back. And also let's decrease the opacity on that a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to take the opacity down from 25 all the way to 10. Okay, so now, if you look at your model, you can see where we need to cut and what needs to happen. Blossom's hair doesn't make much sense because if you look at a photo of her from the back, I don't have one open here, you'll see her whole head is just yellow. There's no end to the hair, so we'll just have to improvise a bit. From the front, if we zoom here, let's make this full screen. We need to, I'm going to once again use the same techniques that I used last time. Let's make this a little bit smaller. I think is this set to snap there. I think that's why. Okay, there we go. Don't want this to be too hectic. So I'm going to create, take some splines. If I can remember where they are, there we go. Ellipse tool. I need to create an ellipse that's similar to this edge of her hair here. So that looks pretty decent. Going to put one there. I'm going to put um, what an extrude modifier on that. Here we go, extrude, and let's make the amount quite a lot. Now, if I go up to the other views, we can see how big that is exactly. Okay, so we need that to go through this head. Okay, and then. Because we are going to um, use an intersection of the two, we actually need three of these heads in order to make it work. But we'll get to that now in a moment. Okay, so we need another one of these flipped horizontal. So I'm going to make a copy and I'm going to mirror it. There we go. And that worked by default. Let's bring them a little bit close together so exactly the way they meet, they look perfect. So we might as well make this one object. Let's select both of them, go to our primitives, <clears throat> compound objects. Okay, we can't select Boolean now. I think we first have to convert them to editable polys. Did that work? Yes, that did work. Okay, I'm selecting both. I think I need to have one selected though to do the Boolean. I oh, accidentally selected the camera there. Boolean, add operandi, there we go. And we make this, a, well, it will already be a union now. 
and now I can right click and convert that to an editable poly. Okay, so for a start, that is one object now. They're already merged. So we now we only need two heads because we only need one more for the back. So maybe following that same logic, let's create all the ellipses and then we don't have that problem. So look at this back. We can use that as a guide. Like I said, Bubbles here doesn't make sense. It doesn't have that. So let's make another ellipse here. I'm going to select the shapes, ellipse, and write quite a large one this time. And that's difficult to see with the white. You can change the default colors of these lines, but I don't do that often. Okay, let's see. Maybe if it was over here. Okay, it's behind the head, so you can't see it. And I'm just trying to get a, a feel for where I think it should be. I don't want to cover the eyes. So maybe over there. And then I see there's a little problem there. We need a bit more because it needs to run at an angle. So let's let's rotate these. Ah, I see there's quite an angle. Okay, could have made a mistake there. Rotate these like that. And then in the front view, Ah, this is going to be an interesting challenge. We have to put a different material on here to be able to tell where they intersect. Firstly, let's apply our modeling material to this as well. Ah, undo. That was the wrong, <laughs> wrong button. This one, apply. Okay, so now if we turn up the opacity on this quite a lot, maybe we'll get some kind of idea it's not easy to guess okay well first let's finish this that one also will throw an extrude on it similar to the other extrude and that's already extruded quite a lot we'll just slide it over now we can select all of those convert to editable polys and then we'll make that a boolean again Add another operandi, add that one, and then we convert these to an editable poly. Okay, so let's quickly see, we've got the hair selected. Let's just make one to see how it goes wrong, and then we can play around with the positioning to make sure that it works better. Select one of these, not both. Boolean, add operandi, add the hair, and then we say we only want the parts where they intersect. And you see what you're left with. It's a pretty nifty hair cap. That in theory could be the right size, but we need to rotate these. So I'm going to pause the video and just do it again. We need to shape them before you add this back of the head to the rest as well. So these still need to be separate objects at the time when we fix that positioning. Let's keep undoing. There we go two separate objects. Let me pause and do this again and then I'll show you the final result. I had a con an idea I'm going to share with you. What I did is I isolated the background and the head just to make this easier and I made a little cylinder and positioned it where the hair needs to be. So that'll help us to establish where the these objects should meet. Whoops, that's the wrong object. Let me just bring it forward so it's outside of the head. And then when we look at it from the front, if I look right there where it meets the head, that's where those objects need to come out. So I'm going to pause again and do that. Another very useful trick is once you've got your boolean, I've got all three objects selected here. I've already done it now. See, there I've already set it to union and intersect and everything you need. Okay, so after quite a bit of struggle, we've got something here. Look, so there's the, the cylinder that I put there to space it out. I got it to touch. I had to change the angle of that those cylinders because it just the front view and the side view didn't make sense together. A lot of times what you can do in a cartoon doesn't work in three dimensions, so you have to improvise a bit. And I've got my Boolean set up with those two as a union and that one, the third object as an intersect which was the head, the third object, the hair part of the head. So now I can just convert that to an editable poly. Let's try that again. Convert to editable poly. And if we want to see what it looks like, we can just put a colored material on it. I have a material set up that does already resemble her hair. Okay, now, okay, at the back they're mixing a bit. I'll sort that out now. 
We can delete this now. And potentially just click on this, move this around a little. Okay, that's decent enough for that part of the hair. Now I'm going to cut to the next video and then in the next video we'll just look at how to do the little ponytails, which are relatively simple. It should be a short video. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, tell us what you think, click the like button below. Otherwise you can send us, follow us and send us messages on our Facebook pages. We've got two of them, our Twitter, the Instagram, the YouTube channel, or our traditional websites if you like that kind of thing. This video is awesome. PeachyDragon.com Happy creative stuff.